Thanks for staying with us. We are starting front page review today with The Punch. But before we go into front page review, I want to remind every one of you to continue to share your stories with us. You know, the stories that you would like people to give you advice on, the burning issues of what you're going through, or some of the stories that you've already gone through, the challenges and you're sharing it as a victory story, please share those stories with us. Send it to us via email, yourview at tvccommunications.tv. That is your view at tvccommunications.tv. You can see it right there on the screen. Watch the screen so that when you have those stories, you can easily share it with us. We'd love to hear your story and use your story to share lessons with many other people. All right, we'll start front page review with The Punch. Today, Saturday Punch, major headline. Nigerian embassies in financial crisis as federal government delays funds. Diplomats, staff face eviction from homes and they are resorting to borrowing. Wow. Mm. Mission should get allocation in foreign currencies, says ex-envoy. Other stories, how I bought hotel where I once worked as laborer. Wow, such a sweet story. Oniba of Iba. Um, another person says, I didn't plan for distinction. Lasso best graduating medical student. Lagos Blue Line unveils modernity, eases traffic, nightmare of traumatized commuters. If a man cheats on me, I will retaliate. That's from Dorothy Bacow. That's um, the Excel sensational TV. story. Mm. <laughs> um, Akaredori resumes work and he writes the assembly. Atiku Obi gets certifi certified through copy and prepare for appeal. You're wasting time. Resources going to um, Supreme Court, a um, Papa faction tells Labour Party candidate, and um, RCCG pastor installed as song begins seven day rights. Now, that is an interesting story. Um, who has a story about the pastor that is now the new song of um, yeah. Bumosho? Yes, I have that. Uh, the past, he was a former pastor at the Redeemed uh, Christian Church of God. His name is uh, Mr. Gandhi Laoye, but he was made to resign from that post by the general overseer, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, and he was made to hand over to a certain uh, Pastor Ulumide Ogunyegbe. He was installed on Friday amidst a lot of um, back and forth with, uh, between the family and the uh, state government. So there's a family member that is claiming that the song was not properly uh, installed. He was not, uh, he's claiming that all the family members were not around or did not make a unanimous decision to install the uh, song. So they've had the matter in court and the court, the judge actually gave, they set October 3 for the judgment and restrained the governor, attorney general, commissioner. Yeah, and, I, I and read restrained, that story. Restrained all of them from actually installing the song until so the final judgment has been given. But then on Friday, he was installed. So we'll just see how that story unfolds. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right, you have a story. Yes, the, I didn't plan for, for distinction. Lasso best graduating medical student. So she was the best graduating student for the 2022 slash 2023 academic session. And she said she just went by her regular activities and she wasn't gone in for that mm -hmm. at the end of the day. But she traced her success back to her secondary school. At first she was an average student, but she found out that she had a teacher who was always encouraging her to do better. Wow. And so in her SS1, she got um, to be the first in her class for the very first time. And from then on, she didn't look back. So she was always, always, always pushing for mm. that um, stride to always be first. And so in our university days, it became easier for her. And also, she mentioned the role of her parents, her mother especially, in achieving this feat, such that her mother was there for her, very present, and ensured that she was always given the right encouragement. She also mentioned the company that she kept. She wasn't just moving around with people where no make sense, but she, <laughs> she had a, a kind of friends being those that knew what they were doing also. And really, she, she, she is excited about this feat, but she was like, 
I never spared it. But <laughs> that's a big congratulations to Dr. Elile Okoka of the University of Lagos, Lagos State University. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dr. Elili. So um, there was an interesting story about how um, the Oniba of Iba, mm -hmm. um, who was formerly a laborer in one of the, um, a particular hotel when they were constructing the place, how then he bought the place then, the story, that was what even made me read the story, only to realize that it had an even more interesting story. Mm -hmm. In that is originally from Igbesha, Igbesha in um, Ugu State, and he was chosen by the Oracle to be the king, and they did not allow him to take that position. Wow. Yes, and then um, he, he sort of like came to Lagos and stayed with the Oba of Iba, the Oniba of Iba, and he finally ended up being the... Um, the one the oracle chose to take over from Iba as well. So it seemed like the oracle really wanted him. The oracles have designed that he's going to yeah. be an Oba. Even though they did not give him one particular position, in another state, he got another Oba ship. Like, it's just a very, very interesting story that what is your own will come to you. You are dest destined mm -hmm. to be Oba. You will always still mm -hmm. become um, an Oba. Let me take the nation major headline. Upset as, upsets as tribunals obtain results in Enugu, Benue, Bayelsa, others. And PDP suffers multiple losses, losses in Ogun State, Yayi, others win. Um, Saturday Nation also carried the story of how bandits burn Catholic seminary, seminarian to death in Kaduna. It's very sad. Why I stopped lying about my age, Undo Commissioner. Kingmaker installed RCCG pastor as someone of Obomosho. Akere Dolu resumes, says, I'll be alive to complete my tenure. Biden joins Tunubu others in India for G20 meeting. What story are we taking? Right. So the Kaduna State Governor, His Excellency Uba Soni, vowed yesterday that the bandits who attacked the Fadan Kamatan parish of the Kafanchan Catholic Diocese late Thursday would not go unpunished. It, this is such a disheartening story. And according to the Khan chairman of the Kaduna State um, chapter of the Christian Association of Nigeria, he said that the attack was targeted at the priest of that parish, Reverend John Joseph, Joseph Hayab. But then he was able to escape just by the whiskers. Unfortunately, this seminarian was in the, uh, the priest's house and he was burnt to death when the house was um, set on fire. And the governor is saying that they would uh, leave no stones unturned. They would ensure that these bandits are brought to book. And the governor has also assured that the troubled communities in Kaduna would be um, secured. He and in uh, to to bring that to light, they have actually recruited seven thousand men and women into the Kaduna State Vigilante Services. So we are hoping that the efforts of the government yes. can really bring the needed peace that these um, troubled Kaduna communities really need. It's, it's been going on for so yeah. long. Oh, yeah. Exactly. There's always one fight between one Christian community and one Muslim community. Sure. And they just want to issue. It's not a... This it's not be topical. Yeah. It's not something that... It's, it's, not a, it's not a seasonal thing. Mm -hmm. It's been there for years. Oh, yeah. And to solve the problem, we need to go back to where the it started roots. from. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have a story to be Yes, yeah. Akere Dolu resumes, says, I'll be alive to complete my tenure. We're happy for him. We're very happy for him because there's been a three-month break. In He went on medical vacation for three months. And so he resumed work 24 hours after um, he got back into the country. And so he met with key stakeholders who um, include the members of the State House of Assembly and members of the National Assembly also. But he met in the Ibad, his Ibadan home mm -hmm. as against meeting in Ondo State. And so it was in Ibadan, he, he submitted his letter of resumption. But then the Ondo PDP spokesperson, Kennedy Peretti, feels that this is like an insult, considering that the people of Ondo State had prayed for his return. Mm -hmm. And so upon his return now, he's deciding to meet the stakeholders in Ibadan mm -hmm. as against meeting them in Ondo State. Correct. So he says that 
his first point of call should have been on those states where everybody prayed for his quick recovery and return to his duties. Instead, he headed for Ibadan and instructed all state cabinet members and state assembly men to join him there. Mm. So that's kind of like an opera also saying that, why are you not in your place of assignment? You scared me. Yeah. <laughs> you probably yeah. scared, exactly. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll continue with front page review. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. So we are still, we're still reviewing Saturday Nation and I have the very interesting story still from Ondo State. A commissioner from Ondo State spoke about why he stopped lying about his age. Um, it's a really inspirational story. Grass to grace is how one would call it. Um, he spoke about how he was once a bricklayer. He was once an Okada rider. He was a commercial bus vehicle rider, started from living in a mud house, and now he's a commissioner um, on budget, commissioner for budget and economic planning in Undo State. Um, he had a personal experience. He said that his name is Emmanuel Igbasson. He said he had a personal experience when he was writing, well, he got a, a, a job, and he asked everybody around him that worked in the microfinance bank, that how much were they being paid? He was being paid 7,500, and everybody around was earning equally small amount of money. The only person that was earning big money was earning about 40,000 naira. And he asked the person, how long did it take you to start earning 40,000 naira? He said he has worked there for 16 years. Wow. He knew that this was not the way for him to make money. Mm. And because of that, he tried applying to other jobs. While trying to apply to those other jobs, his age was cutting him off. So mm. he reduced 10 years from his age. Oh. And he got opportunity to get into a very big bank. He passed all the exams until the final one when they did a verification of his age. <laughs> and he wrote on his CV, they wrote that he performed very well, he is brilliant, but he is a liar. Hey. Then he went home that day and tore his CV and said oh. he will never, ever lie about his age again. Oh. And from... That position, God has taken him to working with the Federal Inland Revenue in Lagos. He has mm. consulted with Ogun State, with Oyo State, before he now found himself in politics as a commissioner mm. in Ondo State that mm. he never expected it in wow. the back thought or felt that this was going to ever happen to him. But he's truly grateful to God for the journey. Though he was once an Okada rider, bus conductor, bus driver, he's now a commissioner. And I, I love those. Yeah, stories. Yes, of when people come out rapidly. to share their experiences and not just say God did it. Especially yeah. when they put in context the story of when they, when they lied. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now it does not pay to lie. Nice. And now honestly Definitely. served them. And I hope that our young people of today take stories like this and they are inspired yeah. by it. Um, I, I love the... I want to take the story about um, Biden joining our president. You know, our president has been in... India for the G20 meeting yeah. for a while. And Tony Lumeli is also there. Mm -hmm. um, um, there are many industrialists, Nigerian um, businessmen that are there. Tony Lumeli, in his address while he was there, said that this is the best time to invest in Nigeria. They might look at Nigeria and say, oh, there's economic crisis, there's insecurity, but mm. that's the best time to invest in Nigeria. Moving on to Saturday Vanguard. Let's do Vanguard first. Yeah. Saturday Vanguard. After the... Um, presidential, um, the PEPT judgment, what's next for our electoral system? Amend constitution, reform judiciary, and INEC. That's what some Nigerians are saying. Then, INEC, judiciary, politicians, problem of our democracy. That's what some other people are saying. NLC draws battle line over Wiki's demolition plan in Abuja. And in Kaduna, sad story of the um, killing of the semin seminarian, which we've taken already. How Nigeria's youngest female lawmaker is coping. Um, that's a record breaker. Honorable Rukayat says, we're breaking records in Kwara State. I will be alive. We've taken that story as well. Why I lost a show from someone in APC. Interest in renewing, um, in renewed rail travel waning. I think that's about the fact that many Nigerians are now scared of taking the railways to travel. And NYSC certificate saga caught O.K.'s fresh suit against Arts Minister. What story are we taking in Vanguard? It seems to have taken many of the stories the, that are there. Yes. Yeah, the, uh, the NLC has okay. drawn a battle line over WK's demolition plan in Abuja. Mm. 
Okay. So according to the NLC president, Comrade Joe Ajero, in an interview, he said that most of these demolitions are directed at the poor. And uh, he said, I'm, I'm going to quote him now. He said, it is impoverishing the masses and it is done with a level of impunity similar to Hitler's tyranny in mm. Germany. That should not continue because it is affecting more workers and if you check the people whose houses have been demolished, demolished it is that class of people that you have not provided housing for. And he went on to talk about um, Nigeria's disposition to welfareism. He said Nigerians are left to cater for themselves. They generate their own electricity, their water, and even pay school fees, and there are no um, provisions for health care. So he even went ahead to mention that workers contribute money for housing policies, but it is being diverted. That's according to him. So he said that the NLC will not allow this war against the poor masses in Abuja to continue, and I just can't wait to see how this um, story unfolds. I really want to know if those houses that have been demolished are actually targeted at the poor or no, um, nobody is being spared. So okay, let's so see how that story unfolds. Okay. I have how Nigeria's youngest female lawmaker is coping. So the Nigeria's female, youngest female lawmaker is Honorable Rukayat Mutunra Yoshitu, and she's 27 year, years old, representing the Owode Oniri constituency of Kwara State. And so she's giving a brief background of how it is that she rose to the, the current position that she currently occupies. And she says that um, it's not that she was just fortunate to be there. Mm. As she was growing up, she found herself involved in politics. She found herself involved in corporate governance, even as an undergraduate too. And so she got encouragement for her father, from her father who helped her in achieving this. And so it was the one that really kind of like encouraged her to get into this position. And so the question of um, how it is that she's the youngest, does she feel intimidated sometimes? And she says no, that one thing she had to just learn is to be constructive in the way that she speaks and in airing her views, mm -hmm. knowing fully well that she also owned that seat. Right, she deserved the seat and not feeling like it. somebody, mm -hmm. I, I'm too young, I can't really speak, right? So the, the mentality of her owning that seat should be very important. And she also gave credit to the governor of Kwara State, Governor Abdurazak Abdurrahman, who literally encouraged women to participate in politics. And as a result of that, um, the North Central is the highest um, number of, uh, is the highest, let me, let me take that. The, we have five women, and that is the highest number in any state in the entire north central of the country. Looking at this, we can actually say that Kwara State has achieved the 35% affirmative action. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of like encourages more women at the end of the day to speak up. That's so she says point. that so far, it's been an interesting ride. Yes, it's not been like the other positions that she'd um, been in in the past, but she's grateful to be here and she's going to give it her all. I think that Kwara State should, to should talk mm -hmm. a lot about that 35% yeah. affirmative. Very few states and even the entire country as a federal, mm -hmm. the fe at the federal level, are not complying with the 35% affirmative. We don't have enough women in position of power. The president promised that we'll have more women but his, ministry, his ministerial list did not depict that. Mm -hmm. We're hoping that some form of board appointment would yeah. depict, would depict that, but we've reflect. seen it at the NDDC. We're not seeing enough women getting appointments, and we do have enough qualified women. So this is just a reminder to um, our presidents to do the, the presidency for... to keep to the promise that they made yeah. to women when they were campaigning that they should vote for them, there would be more women involved. Absolutely. There's a sad story. It's a major um, story in Saturday Vanguard, and it was talking about the fact that Nigerians are no longer interested in the real services, detailing several issues that has happened. Um, in March, 2020, March 2022, March 28, 2022, there was a bombing that happened in the Abuja Kaduna rail mm -hmm. passenger train where 62 people were injured, um, eight were killed. After that, there was a story about derailment that happened in Wari Itakwe Road, leaving 32 people um, stranded. They were abducted as well. Then another same, within the same place, barely a month after, 30 crew members, 148 passengers were stranded in Kogi Bush. Mm. 
and that was because the train derailed. The reason for the derail, derailment hasn't been ascertained comprehensively, but we've had cases of people stealing the rail tracks yeah. as part of the reasons. Then we had people that were attacked um, January this year, 2023, mm -hmm. um, with AK-47, and the attack, the, uh, the attack took place on, on the Abuja Kaduna train service as well again. Yeah. Then we talk about rail colli um, collision, collision with buses or trucks that like the one that happened in Shogunle, Lagos, where we lost mm. some lives. So it seemed that we, we want to do rail. You know, rail would improve speed of transportation, Absolutely. affordability of transportation. Mm. And in actual fact, the rail system should be mm. safe. Mm -hmm. It would just involve a lot more work. So we should study countries where rail system has worked and is working consistently and see what we are not doing. Mm -hmm. Because it shouldn't be this volatile. Yeah. Maybe because we're starting for the first time, but I feel that rail should be we, something... Been, the, the rail we, service we, we has been back, here, exactly. But the, the, yeah, the, the Nigerian Rail Corporation has but been But then Nigerians there, so also, the ones who go to vandalize all those rail tracks, yeah. we need to do better. Yes, it's right. an infrastructure that has been built for everyone to, to have a better us. life. Exactly. So why do you intentionally go to vandalize no such an infrastructure? Exactly. Lives. It's that just are so just hard working it's Nigerians. Just poverty mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Poverty is an excuse. <laughs> Let's move on to Saturday Tribune. This is our last paper for today. Christian leaders, government outraged as bandits burn church with priest. Rivalry among Boko Haram faction worsens insecurity in the north from a report and Emma accuses ward heads of aiding bandits. Kingmaker installs Olaoye Ashong of Ubumosho. Um, the governor has resumed duty. He has written to the state assembly. Um, we flood to south because Buhari's government failed us. This is from a beggar. Um, and go Ikiti government's wife de demand justice for murder of federal university or year student. So that's what we can take off front page review okay, for today. I feel so okay. sad about okay. that we couldn't take the story about how the... Uh, how beggars have been flooding to the south, coming to Lagos. There are a lot of a beggars. Lot of Yesterday, them. I saw children. They're about frustrating. Like, almost 30 children. Mm -hmm. It's a huge number it, of it, children. These children are probably like between my last born's age. They are all between seven, maximum 10 and yes, below yes. on the streets. It's begging. a thriving industry. There's somebody somewhere bringing them to Lagos and then he sends them out. Ah. They, went, but they go to bring says money that because, and because he gets a percentage. This article says that because, so of um, because there's poverty in the north, right, and there's, there's no food, they That's decided to come to, to, to Lagos. The south.